Um, <laughs> I like the way you came back with another style. <laughs> right. Hello, everyone. How are you so, doing? <laughs> <laughs> I really love that. I really love that. <laughs> I didn't wait for a bit. People are joining me. They're like, what's going on here? Exactly. This, this day, let's 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 drive up some views. <laughs> FYI, guys, I can't see with these glasses. <laughs> so I can only hear you. I'm Don't worry, you have, you have a success. I, I can. Okay. <laughs> That's fine then. Let's do this. All right. So I think the network is a bit better. It's a lot better now. Sorry about that. So sorry. This never happens, but. Today that I'm talking to you, it decides to want to mess me up, but God no good shame us. All right, so guys, um, let's get into it. Let's let's not waste any more time. So today we'll be having a conversation with Omar Omi Dada. Um, Presley says, Oh, Leku, you're channeling your inner Leku look. Um, we'll be having a conversation with Omar Omi Dada, the super talented, gorgeous actress who is stealing every movie right now. She's just everywhere. <laughs> really? Am right. I? Hello to me, I am here we are. <laughs> hey, Fee, my guy. Thanks for joining. So, yeah, we are talking about Anila today. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. And um, let's get started. So, how are you doing this evening? Uh, I'm fine. I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a yeah. long day, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, good. We are. I'm very well. Here we are. So let's um, let's talk about the movie Ayla in terms of its performance right now. How how have you um, how do you think the reception? Thank you, has been? thank you. Uh, the reception has been so fantastic. Honestly, um, so when we were filming, we knew we just wanted to do a good film that would stand the test of time and would get to document um, you know something worthy of note, as such as a musician called Ayala, right? We okay. thought it was more going it was going to be more of like a Jakku film or more like a festival film or a what film. But definitely we didn't think it was gonna be a commercial film. We just felt okay, well a few people are going to like it. People that will like films like that will like it, but we didn't think they were going to be so much. And then the mm. film came out and everybody's blazing about it. Uh, it's so surprising because, I mean, not a lot of people of this generation know Ayala or Moura or even listen to Apala music. So the mm, fact that true. they love the movie and they're going to see it, it's, it's so nice. Yeah. yeah. Would, it's really the nice. opening we're night so when I went to see the movie. Okay, what sorry, you were saying something. I said yeah, the opening so night. Was yeah, really go, ahead. Film. go ahead. Go ahead. It's it's been it's been crazy because everyone has been saying that oh it's sold out here it's sold out there, uh, even in Ife in Ilori in states that we were not even thinking, you know when are we coming to Ibadan doing again? We're at um, ICM yesterday, and you know by the time we got in, in fact I wanted to say that oh maybe people would because of us go and see the film and all that but you know we got there late I got there late and they came in much later. Macaroni came in much, much later. But then the two halls, the three o'clock show, the two halls were like literally filled to the brim. I wanted wow. to sit and watch it, but then I could only sit on the staircase to watch it. Was really, the two halls were filled to the brim. And then the 6 p.m. show too was also filled to the brim. The reception has been amazing. And now they say we are the number one film in box office right now. Amazing. So thank you to everyone who has gone to see it. Thank you so much. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's an amazing feeling to have a film that has a number one spot right now. And I remember the opening night when I went to see the movie. Um, I was saying earlier on, before you joined, that uh, there was so much crowd, right? And there were so many people that were on the queue. And um, really? thinking people were there to see Hitman's Bodyguard's Wife or something. And then by the time I was talking to the guys at the, at the counter, and they were like, hey, bro, it's Ayla. I was so surprised. Hey, I was like, serious? Wow. Yes, yes, absolutely. Wow. Oh. So, 
it was it was totally sold out and what even made it more amazing was people were singing along in the cinema there was a guy that was having so much fun in front of me you could tell that i was a massive fan of her in life it was it was just singing away there was a lady behind me um people were just having fun people were having a lot of fun and uh i mean it's amazing and it's great to have that feeling when one does something great and uh no, he's doing so well. So kudos, kudos, kudos Thank to you guys. It's a very beautiful feeling. It's a very beautiful feeling. As I say, I enjoy the movie every time I watch it. It, it feels fresh. It feels new, honestly. What times have you seen it now? The premiere, I saw it in Abel Kuta, and I saw it um, yesterday as well. Yeah. So three and times. I think, and I think eh, I want to go another day to watch it from beginning to the end again. <laughs> this time as a normal fan, not not as a mom media. Do you understand? I just want to watch it. I just want to enjoy. I just want to watch it as an audience, you know? Yeah. The premiere, the hall I was at was so full. And you know my girl was everywhere. So myself and Latif had to sit like at the very front row. So we're literally looking up like this <laughs> to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so comfortable. In Abel Kuta, by the time we got in, the hall was so full. By the time we had to do our interviews and all that, the film was already halfway gone, right? Then yesterday, uh, we didn't start as well. We got in late, so we couldn't really watch the film from the beginning. But one day, one of these merry days, I would go and, you know, I'll just go as a normal person. <laughs> And watch the film from the beginning to the end. Awesome. awesome. I think you should do that. So let's take it back a bit in time. Let's go way back in time and talk about, you know, it's great to see right now that you're having a movie that, you know, of course, this is not the first time, obviously, uh, but it's great to see that you're having a movie that is doing so well in the box office right now and is number one. But let's talk about at the beginning, <laughs> when you started. How from you the beginning. It? <laughs> from, from the beginning. <laughs> um, so let me take it from when I was in primary school. Right okay. from when I was in primary two, I joined Igbo Cultural Troupe. I was always telling my brothers stories. I was always dancing in front of my brothers. I have three mm. brothers. Story of and then when we were about finishing primary school, you know, I just called some of my friends. But the sister my daddy told me, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. So I was like, let's do it. Let's do it together. So you are going to say this one. This You are going to say that one. You are going to say that one. Bring this kind of clothes. And then I say, oh, every man, this is your wealth. You know, I didn't know what I was doing then was directing. I was just telling them, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And then, you know, that was primary school. So when I got to secondary school, GS2, I joined Yoruba Cultural Troop. And um, right from just to I started dancing Bata. Now, Bata used to be the dance for senior um, students. Like, once you, when you get to SS1, SS2, that's when you can dance Bata because it's really hard to do. When I started dancing Bata in GS2, you know, I just always loved it. Then I, at that point, I said I was going to be a lawyer or I wanted to be a lawyer like my grandfather. And I was always, you know, when I argue cases and everything, well, I knew this one, lawyer Lele. You know, this kind of thing, ah, lawyer Lele. And, you know, I was excited about it. Sciences, I knew it wasn't for me because I never liked blood and I never liked um, chemistry or <laughs> physics or mathematics. So I'm one of those people that didn't like mathematics. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, when I got to SS2, I was in press club as well. So, I was in Yoruba Cultural Troop and in press club, you know. So I became the assistant secretary general for press club. Then SS3, the same thing. And one time, like that one man came from outside school and a few of my friends, he was doing, he was teaching them drama. They were supposed to have a stage play. And one of my friends was part of it. So this day during break, she just told me to come and bring food for her. How about the food I went to give her where they were rehearsing? And um, one person didn't come. So they were looking for someone that was just going to play. I think it was the story of Cain and Abel, you know? So they were looking for, but like a traditional version of Cain and Abel. 
So they were looking for someone that was going to, um, you know, that was going to just fit in for that day. So I was the only person I was like, okay, I can help you guys out, you know, let me just help you guys out. And I just did it. And they were like, you're such a natural. Oh my God. Da, 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 da. That's how they, they cast someone else and put me in the play. Oh, you know, by the time the guy, the guy, the actual guy came back, a woman was playing his role. And it was weird. <laughs> then um, university, my first jam, I wanted, I, I definitely chose law, University of Lagos. But um, my jam score was pretty low. I think it was about 204. So I couldn't write post-UME that year. So there was a, there was part of the form, the post-UME form that, that says um, proposed course, you know. So I just chose creative arts. I mean, that's just the next best thing after law. And then they were like, when you get to year two, you can switch back and all that. So I did that. And then my post UME result was really good. The highest was 49 over 50. I was 47. So I was mm -hmm. sure that, you know, I mean, I was going to get admission. I started attending classes. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, don't worry. Complimentary list. Your name will come out. VCs list. Your name will come out. By the time my trick list came out, my name wasn't out anyway. <laughs> yeah. But I realized something because of because I had spent like three months in the department learning a lot about the craft and all. I just knew that this was what I wanted to do. I was just so certain. So I went back mm -hmm. to write jam and this time I chose creative arts, first choice and second choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, my jam was really, really good. But that year, I won a beauty pageant, Miss Acme. My uh, jam lesson then, too. I was overall best student for that year. So my jam was really good. This was great. My books, I love doing. Then uh, I wrote post UME, and this time, my, my post UME score was 99, 99 or 98%. 98%. So when um, Merit List came out, my name was there like this, cross-legging, you know? So yeah, that was like my official journey into studying creative arts. And uh, from the first drama we did, which was Morimia Jashoro, you know, my, my lecturers would invite, our lecturers would invite, you know, external directors to school, you know, to come and just watch us. And a few of them caught me then. So, from year, by, by the time I was in year two, I was in productions outside school. Like, I remember year two was one of my sweetest, yet toughest um, years because I remember the second semester, we were doing a stage play in school called Third World War, and the director wanted someone to play king. And in my class, we didn't have a lot of guys, we had just eight guys. And the ones that were really, really strong were just Wale Ojo, Shinwa Jai, um, um, Tolu Koka, um, Tiamiyu. So he didn't just want one of the regular so you guys. You were all in this class. What do you say? All of you were in the same class then. Yes. In fact, wow. my, me, Wale Ojo, Shinwa Jai, Oyinda Mola, um, additional, and Kemi Richards. They used we were five best friends and our classmates wow. used to call us G five. <laughs> so we're five oh, nice. like what, best friends. What, so what Let me guess, you need luck. Oh yeah. Greatest Akokite. <laughs> hey, greatest Akokites. We are the Akokites in the building. So yes. And then he didn't want the regular guys, you know, either Walishun or the, the usuals. I just told him, sir. I can do it. I can play the king. And I was like, no, 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 Wumi. I don't want a regent. I want like a male king, a male king. And I was like, yeah, I can play male king, like male king. So there and then I started learning to walk like a guy, talking, talking like a guy, you know, and then the gait of a king, which is different from every normal guy. And then all of that. That same period, I had a musical play that was being directed by Williams Epo. And um, the music coordinator was um, Ben Obey, Ben Obeyway, you know, at Muson as well. And that one, I was playing Bernadette. It was it was it was the story of Saint Bernadette, you know. 
So I was playing Bernadette, who was a 14 year old girl, who was singing, and the, the, the voice was really like soprano, like, all that I have said to you are the words that she has broken. You know, I'm doing that outside of school. And then in school, I'm doing a stage play where I'm talking like a king. You know, it was so challenging. <laughs> It so, so in, in like you have to develop multiple personalities. I'm <laughs> telling you, it wasn't easy. It was so challenging, but that was like one of my was best years. Well, that was my best time in school. In fact, by the time we were done with that semester, my CGP was like five was zero. You know. <laughs> so after school, um, from school also. Well, you know, was this was 2008. Oh, I was okay. in 2008, and then. Um, someone called me. His name is Lekon Balogo. He said they wanted to do the play of Oya, the movie Oya. So I was part of it, and I was one of Oya's maidens. And okay. that was my first time acting for TV, was for camera, in front of the camera. But my mm. first time in front of... That was my, the first time acting in a film, rather. But the first time I was in front of a camera was actually as a presenter you know, for the first reality TV show for kids in Nigeria. It's called um, Kid... It's called uh, Kid Zone. No, no. It's called um, Kids... Oh, my God. I can't, I can't believe it. What? Kids Say the Darnest Thing. No, not Kids Say. No, this is a, like a reality show. Like, you know how Big Brother is? The kids yeah. were in the house. Oh, you know, wow. And then, but this one, they had a godmother. And this godmother, they could see the godmother. The um, B- Bookie Wright was the godmother. It was by Fidel Duca. So I was the presenter, you know, what a book does and stuff like that. Yeah, I was the presenter. So that was my first time in front of the camera. And I remember the very first time, you know, we had to roll. I was so tense. I was shaking. I was, you know, I was, I was really, really tense. And then I remember the, P- the PM came to talk to me. That's Lekwa. They came to talk to me. He was like, among me. If you really want to do this, just just breathe in, breathe out. Take five minutes. I went into the bathroom and I looked into the mirror and I said, Oh, mommy, this is what you want to do. Now, this is the opportunity you have to do what you want to do. You've auditioned and all that and you've been picked. You can't let yourself down. The camera is going to be your friend for the very longest time. So the earlier you started loving it, the better for you. And when I came out, the rest was history, you know, yeah. And then, you know, while I was in school, I would go for auditions and stuff. I would get picked. And then sometimes lecturers would be like, so next week we're having a test. Yeah, 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 we're having tests and everything. Maybe that's why they will not call me for one job. Me, I'll go for the job. And I'll tell my classmates that, don't worry, it's not going to happen. All I needed to do was go on my knees and pray. And it won't happen. But it was the time I was in final year. It was supposed to have a test. As usual, I said it wasn't going to happen. Tinsel had called me that morning. I was on Tinsel too when I was in school. You know, Tinsel had called me that morning. So I went. By the time I got back, says happened to, ah, and I went to meet the lecturer, Dr. Turashid. I don't know if he's watching this. I told him that I had to lie that I was having some menstrual pain, yeah, 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 I want to, want to. I said, okay, no problem, mommy. me. So now I'm there and do the test. But he gave me different questions entirely from what he had given everybody. Of and course, I did you it. <laughs> And I did it all, and I got it right, you know. And uh, that was my journey. I finished school, went for NYSC. <laughs> finished school, went for NYSC, got back, started working in a media company, and I just knew that, um, nah, this nine to five work isn't my thing. So I said, no, I have to come back to my first love, which is acting. And yeah, that's the journey. I mean, I attended a lot of auditions, got a, quite a number of no's, uh, a lot of, uh, we'll get back to you. But um, I just kept at it. I knew exactly what I wanted and this was where I wanted to be. So at every point in time, I just kept giving my best and hoping that my talent was going to make way for me. And I, I'm grateful to God for how far I've come. That's a very long journey. That's, yeah, that's an amazing journey. journey. <laughs> and Thank you. Thank you. 
to see, right? Uh, because you know, a lot of people don't uh, don't get to, you know, people say, oh, someone just became a star overnight. Nah, overnight, you know, right? That story kind of shows that, right? Because, I mean, you, you, you've been grinding for a long time. And, um, I mean, you telling all that made me think of a particular question. Um, what was one role that you almost got that you felt, yes, this is going to be mine, and you were really excited about it, but maybe you just slipped away? Is there any role like that? Oh, there are quite a number of roles like that. Quite mm -hmm. a number of roles like that. Um, can I remember now? Please, my friend just walked in. My sister, my love. I'm on your live. Please don't disturb me. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. That's her right there. <laughs> it's like right. Anywho, uh, quite a number. If I can remember. So the thing is, if I don't get a role, I just say it's not mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just oh. it's it's hard sometimes to move on because oh, I remember this character, MTV Sugar. Wow. There was four year, four year. I had wow. gotten to the very last stage of auditions. It was not between mm. myself and Mariah. Mariah was working for um, Classic FM then, you know. And according to the juice that I heard, you know, some people wanted Mariah, some people wanted me, and it was a talk of war, but, you know, Mariah got it. And it really, really hurt me. It's so painful because Sugar was a series I really wanted to be on and all that. But then she got it, and she did good, you know, with it. But, you know, got so faithful. Years down the line, I was also on Sugar. Yay! Yeah, I, was so, that, like, I, I think I remember you being on Sugar at some point. So yeah, I, I guess I said I, Barbie. Yeah. everything was good. Mm -hmm. Great, 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 everything great stuff. Good. But, but trust me, there are quite a number of um, things that I should have done and they slipped because of one mm. thing. Say, so for example, now this stage play more in me. I was supposed to play more in me and BAP really wanted me. But then Shadow it was clashing with Oloture. Mm. I prayed there. Hey, God, I prayed. <laughs> God, let one person move. Let one person, none of them were ready to move. Oloture wanted, wanted me full time. Mori me also wanted me. But then I had to now choose. Then I chose, um, as much as I really love stage a lot, I chose Oloture. And um, I don't think it was a bad thing. Yeah, I do. I, 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 well, um, yeah, in terms of the performance in the movie, um, you definitely stood out. You definitely stood out for me, and I mean that okay. that's that's that goes Thank without you. saying. It makes, it, you stole the show. That's just me personally speaking. Anyways, um, no uh, no offense to anybody else in the film. Now, um, in terms of your career over time. Um, you've mentioned a few people that have been influences, and um, who are some of those people that uh, you would say, okay, I give these people credit for some of the things that I've been able to do in my career, or some of who you looked up to and you said, you know what, these people, I really admire these people, this, the way they've done their journey. Um, do you have anybody like that? Um... One person that has been a sister. <laughs> my friend is watching this video on her phone. And she's very I'm disturbing. <laughs> she's disturbing me. Um, I would say my very first um, director on stage, like proper stage, which was which is um, Femi Oke. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. was a student at that point he, he, so for him his course was directing and then mine was acting mm -hmm. so he mm -hmm. taught me quite a number of things that I know now in acting you know and I mean that was more like I would say that uh, then I would also say Victor Sanchez Agahua he cast me last mm -hmm. minute for um, Polake on Jimmy G. 
I would also say... Oh, yes. That was Jimmy J. Wow, you've done plenty of work, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, say, maybe today, to think I auditioned, been... I auditioned for Sanchez in 2010 or something. I remember that audition vividly. James Omoko said he was there. And then Udwak, Udwak Obong Patrick, they said it was, they were there. And then, you know, after Jimmy G, you know, Sanchez was saying that he saw me at that audition in 2010 and he said that he was going to work with me. Fine, I didn't fit this character that I had auditioned for, but mm. he knew that he was going to work with me. And then when, when the character for Lake came, in fact, they had auditioned. I wasn't even in the country when they were doing the audition. So when I got back, I think he heard that I was back. And then he just, last minute to he just said I should come and audition for it. And um, bam, you know, I got the character. And so he, he was saying that, you know, he just knew I was going to work. Which goes to say that, see, the, it, it really doesn't matter how many no's you get. As long as for every time you have the opportunity to showcase your craft, you give it your very best. You die put. Like, you do it as if you would not have any other time to showcase yourself. Because guess what? You don't know who is looking at you. You don't know who is watching. It might be one scene on TV. And that one person might just pass and say, ah, ah, who is this person? I want this person on my next project. So there is there, there are all of those people. And then I, I would say, uh, Mo Abudu, I really love her. I really love her. Um, a lot of people might think that, you know, Oloturu was the first time I was working with Mo, with Emmy. But no, you know, uh, she has commissioned a project called Married to the Game, which um, Walter Banga directed, you know, and he had me on it. And um, I had also done Best Friends for Ebony Light, which was a series, a mini series. Then I also did Dairy. And then, you know, I auditioned for Oloturu and... God was um, awesome, but I know she loves me and she try and she pushes me a whole lot. So yes, I'm really grateful for that. So all of those people, yes, yes. Um, the people mm -hmm. I would love to work with, I'd love to work with um, Mia Kimolayo as a director. Yeah, I would love to work with um, Ink Blot as a production company. Yes, mm -hmm. and um. I'd always wanted to look, work with TK first, and you know it happened. Yeah. yeah. So, um, speaking that that leads us straight up into the next question, and of course, I have no doubt that the other people you mentioned, in Blood and uh, uh, Aunt Hill, you're going to work with them. I'm sure, me too. <laughs> but <laughs> that leads us to the next question, which is, how were you able to land the and Laro? Where I'm very curious to know how you got that role. Um, <laughs> of course, it looked like you embodied it. And it's something that you were you know, very fluid in, and you were, you know, there was this chemistry between yourself and uh, hmm. and DMG. But Let's tell see. us you know, how, how did you how did you get there? Okay, so some when we were shooting DMG, Tiki had called me that he wanted to do CD Lujile. That's um, the film version of The Lion and the Jewel. But okay. I was on a one-year contract with, um, I was on a one-year contract with Mnet for Jimmy. Mm -hmm. So the okay. shadows were crashing. I couldn't do it. It really pained me a lot. But I, I just prayed to God that God make this thing happen someday. Mm -hmm. So the PM buzzed me and said, "Oh, mommy, we're doing this film, and you like, and we want you to audition for a character." She sent me the script on a Saturday. She said I should do uh, a videotape. And she wanted me to send it to Max by Sunday or something. I was on the set of Game On. And it was a tight schedule because we were shooting amidst the whole COVID, um, amidst the whole NSAS, Buhaha, and all of that. So I read the script. I knew that I couldn't get my other actor friends to read with me. The people on set, most of them were not, the other actors, most of them were not Yoruba, so nobody could read with me. So I got our costumia, Damola, to read with me, to play Ayinla with me for the audition. And then um, one of the makeup artists, you know, to help me record. 
so now when we finished shoot that night, I think we finished shoot around 11. I remember begging everybody, like the light guys especially, please light guy, please don't turn on the light, don't turn on the light, please don't take the light, please I just want to do a small audition, please everybody as you're striking the sets, don't make noise. I remember I had to be begging everybody, please, 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 I'm trying to make a video and everything, everybody was tired, they all wanted to sleep at least, filming all day. So we did the, 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 I did the audition, the two videos, and I sent it to them. And I know you're anything again. <laughs> Until, you know, she came back to me and said, oh, mommy, congratulations. You got the role of Deborah in I you love the movie. I'm like, yay! You know, I grew up listening to I you love my song, you know. Wow, I didn't, nice. Yeah, I listened. I listened to it. I mean, it wasn't one of my favorites growing up because I used to wonder, and oh, this man is very slow and everything and all of that. But I kind of liked it a bit. Then my very first boyfriend, <laughs> you know, was a huge fan of Ayinla. I understand, you know, but this was a young, fine boy, six four, tall, dark, handsome guy, and in his car, he's literally. Playing Ayala Mawura song. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why are you listening to this guy and all of that and all of that? But he was also a very big romantic. So when I had the opportunity, and my, my dad had told me a little bit of Ayala, like the story of his life, how big he was in his days. Because my, my dad grew up in Abel Kuta, he's an exam man. So my dad knew Ayala Mawura. So having the opportunity, one, to work with TK who for six years of my life, I would pass front of his office at St. De Calisto in charity Oshodi because it was on the way to my school. You know, for six years, I would say, ah, one day this man, I would work with him, even when I didn't think I was going to be an actor. You know, and this was happening. And, you know, it wasn't just a regular story. It was the story of a music legend from my hometown, and I'm going to be part of it. Okay. Oh, that's that's <laughs> that's, so that's glorious. <laughs> I was so excited. But when I read the script from beginning to the end, I was angry. I was I was really angry. That Why? How can, that how can a man be so um, talented, be so great, and and then at the peak of you know exporting his craft, he makes certain crazy insane decisions that got him to a certain end i don't want to say too much in case some people are here and they've not watched the film exactly so i was pretty angry and you know the film teaches me teaches a lot teaches us a lot of things we have people that are very famous and all that but some of those people have their demons hmm. at the end of the day nobody's perfect whether celebrity, so, most famous, veteran, bobo to bobo, world famous, nobody's perfect. We all have true. our demons. We all have our weaknesses, our strengths, um, challenges, and the daily struggles like every other person. We are all true. sometimes faced with, there is a the human nature, you know, which comes out to play many times and which can make or mar you. You know, and that was one thing that the film taught me. And then most importantly, patience. Maybe it's not yeah. about it's true, Larry. Patience is a virtue. It's really yes. true. Yes. Very true. Very, very true. And I think I, I agree with you totally on that. <laughs> Your audio again. Um, and I agree totally with you on that because, um, I mean, uh, not to spoil it, let's not, let's not talk anymore about this. We can always have this conversation later when more people have watched the film. But yeah, patience is a virtue, like they always say. And uh, I mean, we've seen a lot of people get ruined. Um, hey, all these people that are <laughs> Okay, so um, in terms of uh, working with TK, um, of course, we're talking about Ayla, so yes, we'll, we'll talk about Ayla a bit. <laughs> so in terms of working with TK, what was, what was that experience like? So finally, you got to work with the legend. So. What was, what was the experience like? What was that thing that you would not forget about working with him? 
for, for a fact, he's one of the most amazing people on earth. He is very patient. He's super humble. He is very passionate about the craft. Obviously, we can see this. TK, he comes to you as if he's your friend. It's not like that up in the skies. Oh my God, TK, when we call, I call him Baba Me. I call him Baba Me. Baba, Baba, we find boy, be take me by. He makes you so comfortable. He makes you feel like you're talking to your friend and you want to just open up and gist with him. And then TK is old. He's an old man, but he has a young body. 3 a.m., mm. 2 a.m., 4 a.m. We are three young actors. We're tired. We're like this. And, you know, this we're really... TK is everywhere. Mommy, show sure, okay. Show sure, all right. TK. Share new recipe. My worrying tea, Jerry, more okay, you know. And, and I'm wondering, how is this man? And so, where is, where is he getting his energy from? But guess what pushes him? The passion for the craft. Because he knows that this is a great film and a huge responsibility has been bestowed on him and he has to deliver. So, even if it means that he has to rob himself of sleep and rest and everything for as long as he gets what he wants. In making a great film, he, he legit just forgets that he's an old man. Then, most importantly, after almost every scene, TK would come to me and whisper into my ears and say, Ah, Omoumi, thank you. God bless you. It's an honor to have you on this project. That scene was fantastic. You're such a fantastic actor. And he's praying wow. into my ears. Wow. A man wow. like that is praying into my ears. And I realized that I wasn't the only one he was doing that to. He was doing that to almost every other actor. Wow. Making you feel that he appreciates your craft. Wow. How can a man like TK be telling me he feels honored having me on his set? You know, that is so wow. humbling. And that shows that for me, humility, humility is key. Mm. You know, and appreciate mm. everyone around you. It was so fantastic working with him. Ah, sometimes you you would do some mad shots, or you'd be like, ah ah, abaji. He would let it be brainy. I'm sorry, I'm speaking Yoruba. Like, like, where did he even think of this? And if you have seen the film. For someone to create something like that, you will know that, yes, he's a man of great vision. I, I learned a lot from him. I learned a whole lot from him. I learned a lot from him. And I'm looking forward to working with him again and again and again and again and again and again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, now let's, let's have a bit of fun, like, uh, like a quiz, sort of. If you were to pick, um, no, nah, well, there's nothing serious. Don't worry. It's not. It's not school. We're not going to school. <laughs> well, let me check. Let me check. Please no. Help me check. <laughs> Yo, I think your audio is gone. Okay, okay, okay. Your friend, your your naughty friend, I guess. No. Okay, so no, no. And she decided to help me open the door. Oh, okay. No, no problem. All right. So um, let let's just have a bit of fun in terms of just a random quiz or anything like that. So if you were to uh have three actors, I mean, you've told us a couple of people that you've worked with, people you would love to work with within the Nigerian space. So if you were to have three actors and directors internationally that you would like to um, work with, who, who would that be? You know, you never can tell. They can be listening to this call and you know, the universe can just allow. Director, <laughs> can, I, can I start? Steven yeah. Spielberg. Oh, wow. Quentin Tarantino. Oh. Quentin Tarantino. Um, Heidi Perry. Tyler Perry. Zach. <laughs> Thank you. 
Zach Snyder. Wow, you have a very interesting selection. That's 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 amazing. So it's a mix. It's a mix of sci-fi and uh, you know crime and action. So are we looking at? Are you trying to tell us that one of the next shows you're going to play in Hollywood is an action movie? Are we looking at something? Like that? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so um, doing an action film is one of the things that I'm I'm really looking forward. Um, okay. Also, um, animation or superhero character. Okay. I love animation so much. <laughs> but wasn't wasn't a human being. I think I would have been an animated character. I always say this. Someone would have written a more of me from somewhere. <laughs> Well, you know, it's an exciting time for Nigerian animation, though. Um, just to chip that in, um, there are a lot of um, Nigerian animations that are getting greenlit internationally. At least I know about four. Um, there's Waju, there's Ereti uh, by uh, Comic Republic. There's, uh, you know, there are so many of them. So you never can tell. I mean, maybe one of these projects would, would you know, would just... <laughs> Oh, me, oh, for Presley, the script writer. Well done. <laughs> now, actors. Oh, my favorite actor of all time, Meryl Streep. Ah, the legend. <laughs> Don't want if I work with Meryl Streep, people will not hear what though. Ah, you know what okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think first first time I would meet her, I think I'm going to cry. Like I struck that one for a fact. She's she's something else. She's in a certain league that is performer. Yeah. yeah. Film, stage, musical films, everything she is. Mm -hmm all round another mm. person i'd love to work with is charlie steron uh, uh, this, is my, this is my action you know those action like this is oh oh i'm having goosebumps hey hey, <laughs> hey, hey. I'm uh, some African sister She's amazing. She, she's a, she's an amazing action star. She's doing an amazing job. And guess what? Yeah. That drama too, all this uh, fantasy. I mean, she kills it. Look at yeah. her, um, Snow White and a Huntsman. Oh man, that's where she acted. Uh, was he a serial killer? I'm not sure where she was really. If anybody knows the movie I'm talking about in the audience, I can't remember the name, but she 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 had to really change her face and her body. And it was a really intense role that she played. It was something else. Like old guard. Yeah. You know, for, she, a bit, eh, for a bit, I kept saying that black girl, that black American girl who was who was in the U.S. Army. I kept saying, "This girl is playing my role. This girl is playing <laughs> my role. I'm the one that should be there." I'm the, that I'm the, I'm the <laughs> <laughs> this girl is playing She's playing my role, oh. Ah, I've seen no, it. Like, it's it's going to happen. Amen, oh. God win. God win. <laughs> a man that I would really love to work with. Um, you know, the, you said three, I mean. You have, you have an exquisite list. My brother. Hmm. You have very good taste. I give it to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. If I was not born in Nigeria, maybe all of these things that be happening because I mean, as in thing and the way I'm host, like the host too. If it was a man <laughs> that they give birth to me and I'm hustling this hustling like this, oh my my man, yes. right now. <laughs> but we bless. You. We we, we, we bless God for, for for wherever we find ourselves, if, <laughs> even if it's two years. <laughs> okay, so as we begin to wind up the conversation um, or wind down in this case, if you have questions, please feel free uh, to ask. And if you have anything you want to say to Naomi, please feel free to 
um, drop it in the comment section. It's been an exciting conversation. And um, the last thing um, <laughs> I'll take is. Femi, what did you say? He says, I'm going to go to the I don't work with them. So let me be praying to work with all these people so that it's will happy. Uh, <laughs> and then I said, oh, you guys need a DP? I know one man as DP. Tell me, I will do this his name. I don't know what's going to carry go to Holly. Holly, Holly, Holly. Yes, yes so Femi is dope. <laughs> oh, super dope, super dope. What am I like this? <laughs> don't worry, you're, you're, you're cool the way you are now. So, um... <laughs> You've worked with, I mean, you've worked with really amazing people. You mean, you've mentioned Victor Sanchez, Tunde Kelani, CJ Obasi. Um, recently, uh, the sessions, which was uh, premiered at uh, uh, Nollywood Week, and you know your tomboy. I think as well, one of one of the most like one of the best directors from here. Yes. Yeah. No, sorry, I didn't get that. And again. Yeah, Kenneth. Oh my God, Kenneth! Amazing, amazing. I mean, I remember the first time we had a sit down to have a conversation, and you know, just like you mentioned, TK being down to earth. Also, Kenneth is Kenneth is really that guy, really yeah, that guy, and one of the best guys in the game. So you've worked with some really amazing people, and um, do you see yourself directing sometime in the nearest future? I do. I think. Scared. Why? Because I was a directing major in school. The thing. Wow. Yeah. And then sometimes when I'm helping my friends, when my friends read their lines, I'm talking to them about <clears throat> certain characters that they're about to play and you know, having conversations with them. That was like, oh, mommy, why are you going to direct it? Because the way you are analyzing this character and helping me understand my own character just be a director already but i think my fear is that um i haven't gone to a proper film school so i don't have a grasp of the camera so i don't want to tell a story right but as a director as much as you're artistic you also have to have a good um knowledge of Understood. the camera you know the what mm. frame you want I want to tell the story. So that, that I think, is my only challenge. And I'm just scared. I don't know. I need to just overcome it. I, I, I saw a tweet today by um, Femi Ogunso. Great guy also, of course. I'm sure you know Femi quite well. You've worked with it, um, Emnet a lot. And um, he said something. You know, he was putting another tweet. And, um, you know, somebody put out a tweet about the fact that if you want to make a film stop, um, just just go for it. And you also put it in and say, you know, just, the way to just do it is just do it. Please just do it. Just do the first one and you can learn all the camera gimmicks as you go on. <laughs> yes. We want to see you yes. direct yes. something. We want to see you become your own Quentin Tarantino and Steven Spielberg. <laughs> right. I just, my biggest fear is fear of failure. Uh, Don't worry, you can back up. <laughs> All right, so thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Like, Femi, you. Mm. <laughs> conversation, no. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so you say something. You say surround yourself with good crew and work through pre production with them. Yeah, even me right now, I'm, I'm actually, I've been speaking to a lot of people and I'm like, I want to visit sets, I want to actually learn a lot of things. So, yeah, um, I think uh, at some point we'll clash sometime in, on one set or we'll meet on one set or something. Amen. Yeah, so thank you very much for your time. I mean, you're promoting your film right now. It's a lot of work, taking time out to actually do this. Um, I'd not take it for granted, even though we're friends. Thank you so, so, so much. It's been been an amazing conversation. Thank you. I really enjoyed this. And um, like I would tell you over the phone, we were, I think you should come back into um, critiquing films officially and you should Instagram. Soda and popcorn used to be 
that blog spot that would go to to determine whether this film is good or not and you do an amazing job at it you know at doing constructive criticism and i'm telling you openly now to the world that you need to come back because please we need to feel you back okay thank you thank you very much for that comment and um i'm taking that advice oh back to your to your yeah. I know. <laughs> all right have a good